So here's what has happened in the time that we last left off. I traveled to the Royal Gorge and I made it through just barely. I lost all my weapons, but I made it out. I had to fight this griffin, which attacked me until I was almost dead, but I lost all my weapons instead. So I got through that and then I made it to the castle. And at the castle, I met the crown prince and he told me that he could break the curse. The crown prince told me that Nicholas, which I had met before, believes that it's the crown prince's fault for the curse. The crown prince wants me to capture Nicholas and bring him back to the castle, basically to put him in jail until the curse can be broken, which would clear the crown prince because the true king is the one who can break the curse. So he gave me a choice to either capture Nicholas or leave. And I decided I would agree to the contract, which he then outfitted me with some gold and I was able to buy. I got the oak bow, banner, and a shuriken. I then proceeded to Nicholas's hideout and that is where I am. And that's where we will start this next playthrough. So let's go to the hideout. Searching for the hideout has proven difficult. The map was accurate, but not very detailed. Searching along the eastern hills for trodden paths should be easy, but this outlaw, Nicholas, is very clever. So says the royal guard. Choose one volunteer to test awareness five. Okay. I got three, but I also have plus two awareness, so I pass. You notice an unnatural pattern on the ground and you stop walking. You find a hidden rope that leads to an untriggered net trap. Each volunteer draws one XP cube. Gold, nice. Continue to four. You notice a very narrow path with angular rocks blocking the way. You notice that one of the rocks is a singular boulder and not part of the wall. Do I physically remove the boulder or study how the boulder was placed? I'm going to physically remove it because I have more strength than I do knowledge. So, physically remove the boulder, go to seven. You position yourself against the rock and push as hard as you can. Volunteers test group strength 10. All right, so I need to test a group strength, but this is a solo game, so. Ouch. All right, so three plus three more would give me six, but I don't pass. Okay, fail. Go to 13. You aren't able to move the rock at all. You rest for a bit and then try again. All right, so basically I need to roll until I get it. Five, three is eight. I don't pass. And there I am. All right, 11. So 11, I don't need to pay any strength, and I pass. I move on to 12. The massive rock tumbles end over end and rolls down the hillside and splashes into the stream below. You begin to move forward, but something bursts from the ground and latches onto your boot. Initiate battle with a giant centipede. All right, so we've got to fight a giant centipede. There it is. So let's initiate battle. This giant centipede gets to roll up to four dice, has a hit point of 19, and has an extra ability here. When a giant centipede applies damage, the target becomes stunned. Massive weapons add plus one damage against giant centipedes. Okay, so. I don't have to worry about that, but if I become stunned, that means I lose a turn. So he goes after me. Let's get this battle going. All right, first round, I'm going to fortify. I'm going to block. Oops, I forgot. I need to. I need another stamina. I didn't put all my stamina in there. Okay. Um, 
All right, so I've got six plus my oak bow. That gives me nine marksman plus two, so I hit him with 11 hits. And now it's his turn. He gets to roll all four. All right, eight, 14, 16 hits. So I've got three, six, nine, 11. And he hits me. All right, I lose one. New round. He gets to go again. I'm gonna block everything this time. All right, all right, 11, 12. I've got nine plus my eight here, 17, I block it. Now it's my turn. I'm just gonna use my shuriken. That gives me two plus my adrenaline gives me, f no, not my adrenaline, I can't use that. My marksman gives me two more and that's it but I'm also going to stun him this time which shouldn't be a problem because it's a new round I get to refortify I just use six six plus fifteen and I take him out fairly easy all right let's go to the victory victory entry nine each volunteer draws two XP cubes. After disposing of the giant centipede, you continue forward on the path. Uh-oh. All right, so I drew gold and a threat. So now I've drawn five threat. And immediately, before anything else happens, you draw the first threat event card. And you read it and resolve it. Pilford. A group of men traveling in a wagon filled with stolen goods sees you on the road. They also see you as an easy target and a way to add to their spoil. Initiate battle with outlaws times two. Okay. So I need to battle two outlaws. Oh, yeah. Minor threat deck is right here. So I need to find two outlaws and fight them. This should be easy. So the first outlaw, he rolls a six, and the next one rolls a five. So here's my initiative. And uh, yeah, this should be no problem at all. So my 11, I get to go first. My 11 takes him down to here. I need to refresh my cards. My 11, and then I'll use my shuriken to add two more to that. And he's out. And now it's this guy's turn. He gets to roll three, so I might be in trouble actually. All right, he rolls 11, and I can only block seven here. And actually, yeah, I was gonna say maybe I should have stunned him, but already played all right new round refortify and it's his turn and I'm going to <laughs> I'm gonna block it so he gets to roll all three he rolls a nine I've got five here and easily block it with my 13 and now it's my turn I'll use my oak bow takes him down to three and my marksman adds two more and I can use adrenaline now because I have three or less stamina and that adds four more to that and now it's a new round so I refortify I'll easily take that six take him out okay 
So now we've resolved this card. Victory. Volunteers gain three iron each. All right, so I discard that threat event and I get three iron for that battle. Now what happens now are that these five threat go back into the bag. Let me get my three iron. There we are. So return all the threat back to the bag. Refresh and continue the story. Okay. After disposing of the giant centipede, you continue forward on the path and into an enclosed canyon. Some distance away, you come to a narrow pass with more rocks blocking the way. You slide in between and continue on a dirt path. You know the crown prince seems a reasonable man, but he is not what you think, blurts a voice from somewhere close by in the shadows. The reason why I've allowed you this far is to show you that I can be trusted and warn you of the crown prince. Continue to 14. My name is Nicholas. A young balding man walks out of the shadows and continues to speak. Citizens have asked me to look into the crown prince's affairs. The man does have records of being the son of a king, but he left his inheritance long before he marched into Oakhaven. I've gathered all the information that I could. I then declared that he is not in the line of the king of Oakhaven. So I ask, who is he or what is your plan? I'm going to ask him who he is. The crown prince's name is Aaron, and he made claim to the throne almost six years ago, shortly after King Hestus died. There was much speculation, but no authority figure would look into it. Things just went on as normal. Many citizens were perplexed, so I formed a group of watchmen, a sort of guard for the citizens. There really wasn't much we could do at the time, and there isn't now. The crown prince arrived with a force much larger than what we could deal with. No one else was willing to fight, so no one really knows who he is. What is your plan? Nicholas suddenly becomes excited, and what he tells you next is something completely unexpected. I have a weapon to overthrow Aaron, and I'd like you to help. So I can either ask, what is this weapon, or why remove Aaron if things are fine? I'm going to just ask him what this weapon is. Nicholas reveals that he has discovered the race of the Nephis, hidden deep in the recesses of the canyon. The Nephis were an ancient race of giants who are cursed creatures, great in stature, unholy, and haters of good. This, says Nicholas, is written on the ancient scroll that is kept in the library at Canaan Village. Nicholas believes he can use the Nephis against Aaron, but he needs help from a man named Malab to turn the Nephis against the king. Some say Malab is a prophet, some say a wizard. I don't care which, but I know he will help anyone who has gold, and I have plenty to offer, Nicholas says with an air of arrogance. I'm now asking you to find Malab and offer him the gold which I will give to you in return for his services. You've heard enough. You must make a decision as how to move forward. Okay, so my choices are arrest Nicholas for insurrection, or help Nicholas find Malab. Wow, okay, so I've just been sent by the king. I agreed with the king to arrest Nicholas. Maybe I should just stick to that plan. All right, let's arrest Nicholas for insurrection. 19. You are under arrest by order of the king, you state evenly. You have come to the wrong place to defy me, Nicholas says with a smile. You draw your weapon ready for a confrontation, but Nicholas and his men are running toward a small crevice far to the back of the canyon wall. You follow them into the dark crack as the remaining light fades from the sky. Discard the hideout location card and immediately explore the following location card, the Nephus. Okay, so going to 
discard the hideout and explore the Nephis. Alright, I forgot. There's Canaan Village. I still have Canaan Village. And there's the Nephis. And now we'll go to the Nephis. Okay. The crevice leads into a deep chasm with stairs built into the sides of the walls. Its depth must be at least 500 feet. Nicholas and his men have reached the bottom and have climbed onto a platform of wood and iron bars. An iron cage is lowered around them and four of the men pull a wooden lever. As the men pull the lever, a large door in the wall opens up into the blackness. Continue to two. When you reach Nicholas and his men in the cage, it begins to lift upward, suspending them almost 20 feet in the air. A crashing sound rumbles behind you as the stairway you descended crumbles into the abyss below. You are trapped in a tomb. Nicholas and his men continue to ascend out of sight. You move forward, hoping to find something to light your path. Tiny torches line the walls inside the door that opened. Past the opening is a large hall with towering pillars that extend far above where light can reach. You move into the darkness and sense something watching you. Initiate battle with giant centipedes. Four. So I've got giant centipedes to deal with. More centipedes. Must be where the centipedes live. Okay, there's two, what are they all at the end, yeah, there's three, and there's four. Okay, let's look at what these, these guys do. Four centipedes, okay, well we already, we just recently did this. Yes, so they are the ones that stun the target if I get hit. Massive weapons add one plus one damage. All right. Let's start this. Well, first, before I fortify, I want to roll to see what order. All right. He's five. He rolls a four. And he rolls a one, so he's first in line. And then this last guy, he rolls a six, so he's last. Okay. So we already know these guys can stun, and they roll up to four. So now I will fortify. All right. I'm going to... Yeah, I'll do this. I'll split it up. Four attack and five defense. All right, this guy gets to go first. He rolls all four of his. He rolls 10, 12, 18. I've got five plus my eight, 13. I take a hit. All right, not a good start. So I can't go. This guy gets to go. So he's gonna roll. Oh good, a low roll. Four and five. Is nine, so yeah, I've already got the five there, and my eight blocks it, so that's good. Now this guy goes because he's still in range 10, 13, 16. So I've got five, 11, and I am stunned again. That's okay, this is just for this round. So I've already been stunned, so it doesn't mean I, I'm stunned again when I come back. So his turn to go. He's too far away, so it becomes a new round. And I get to refortify. I'm gonna put I'm gonna split these up again. Three on my defense, or three on my attack, five on my defense. His turn too far away and it's this guy's turn and he 
All right, he hits me. Boy, I should have really put defense on there. So 12, 22, I couldn't have blocked it anyway. So I'm again stunned. And I'm down to one. Wow, that didn't take long. Well, I'm going to get rid of my shuriken. So instead of removing the stamina, I'm going to lose a weapon. So we'll get rid of that. And now he can go. He gets to <laughs> do everything. I'm going to lose all my weapons again. All right, three, seven, and nine. So my five and my iron shield and banner, it gives me 11. So I block it, which is good. I don't want to lose anymore. I'm stunned, so I can't actually attack. And now this guy gets to go. All right, so he's probably going to hit me. There's 9 and there's 12. So what did I have? I had 6, and then my devout gives me 2 more. So 11, 13. So I blocked. I blocked it. I blocked his 12 with my 13 defense. Whew. All right. I'm not stunned any longer, and it's a new round. And I'm going to, yes, I'm going to block, try to block everything. But he does get to go again. And he rolls at 9. He, no, he rolls 13. I have 18 total, so I block that. It's now my turn. I'm using my oak bow. It gives me 3. I'm going to take this guy out. So 3 plus my marksman. Add 2 more in my adrenaline adds four more it brings him down to nine now I'm going to stun this guy he loses his increased threat die and only uses three dice so he only rolls eight there I block it easily which means I can refresh an armory card at no cost. And now it's his turn, but he can't go because he's stunned. His turn, but he's too far away. And now it's a new round. So I've used my shield to stun. It's a new round. I refortify. Uh oh. I'm going to be in trouble. So coming this way, out of range, he gets to roll. And yeah, he rolls six. He rolls at 12. I have four plus my eight is 12. I just blocked it. So now it's his turn. He only rolls three. Oh, he hits me with 13. So he gets one more over. So I'm stunned again. And I'm going to have to lose. I'm going to have to lose something. Well, and I'll have to lose my banner, I take it, because I need my oak bow to attack. So I'm going to lose my banner. I don't think I'm going to make it out of this. And so I'm stunned, and it's his turn. They're going to knock all my weapons out. Yep, he's going to do that too. So I lose my oak bow. Do I want to do that? Yeah. I'll have to lose my oak bow. New round. I refortify. <laughs> Gonna have to go with that. His turn again. And he hits me. And I'm gonna lose my iron shield. Because if I lose my stamina, I'm dead. And I don't want to do that yet. Okay. So. What I have nothing I can hit because I'm stunned this round. And so this guy goes. He rolls three. Actually, no, I'm stunned. I can't go at all. So it's this guy's turn. He rolls, what's that, a nine, 13. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Dead again. So I lose all this.
So I'm going to refresh and start again. You know, I made this game to be very hard. And in my opinion, if you play games and they're too easy, they're just not any fun. I like a challenge, and I hope you do too. So this is why I'm playing through solo, to show you that while it's very challenging, it, it can be beat. You just have to find your way through the right, um, the right locations and have the right, obviously there's some luck with the draw of the, of the experience, um, but it can be done. All right, so I've been knocked out. I'm gonna reset my character. I do that by reviving and then drawing two cubes. I've already got stamina, so I set that to the side, draw a new one. Okay, I've got two iron. Put that back. And what I have here is the Nephis and Canaan Village. So maybe I should go back to Canaan Village and do one of these. Well, I've only got one left at Canaan Village. All right, let's, let's put these together and look at these. So some of the ones that I um, collected in between when I didn't film was Ravenswood was a new one I collected. I can help farmers hunt down a creature that is killing the livestock. Uh, Reuben Village, um, I can help help a village fight off the threats that have driven them underground. And the Nephis, which I just attempted, um, and Canaan Village, which I've been to. So we could do Reuben Village or Ravenswood. Maybe Ravenswood would help us gain some uh, some things. Although. You notice the iconography. There's nothing where I can buy, but I know I can find items there. Reuben Village unlocks more locations. Crumbled Manor, there's a uh, scroll and a Dark Guardian. I don't want to go there. Canaan Village is where I could go to market, but I don't have any iron or gold yet. And I could just continue doing the Nephis. And, uh,. Chase Nicholas. Um, what do you think? What should we do? Ravenswood, Crumbled Manor, Canaan Village, the Nephis. Hmm. Let's, well, we should probably go to Canaan Village because I just, I just don't have any weapons anymore. All right. I still have my skills, which is good, which really saves me. <laughs> so let's go back to Canaan Village. Now in between um, the play that you didn't see I did go to Canaan Village and I completed the Dangerous Deliveries um, quest. So really the only thing I have left is the Captured Cook quest. Now since I am in the back in the village, I can purchase skill cards, um, but only the level one skill cards, which I already know I don't have anything. See, I can I can buy the uh, skill two cards because of the dangerous deliveries. So maybe there's something there I could I could gain. But most of these cost grit. That gives me one extra strength. I've already got adrenaline. Shield rush costs three. Stalwart. But that costs strength. That would give me some some defense. Nothing I can do with that. 
let's see what I can buy with two iron. Um, well, I could buy my shuriken back. Might as well have something, right? All right, so I'm gonna buy <laughs> buy a shuriken to throw. All right, well, let's do the captured cook. Go to entry four. The blacksmith welcomes you and tells you that he can have anything custom fit in less than an hour. He then says, I've heard the good work you're doing for the village. I hope you might consider trying to find a good friend of mine who was kidnapped last week. French Shorty is his name. We've been friends here ever since he moved to Oak Haven. He's the best cook I've ever known, and that's saying a lot if you know about my mother's cooking. He was kidnapped last week. He was out on one of his shopping trips for ingredients. He always went for fresh herbs and spices if they were available. He lives in the Lebanon forest, so you should start investigating there. He has many friends that would be grateful if you could find him. Each volunteer draws two XP cubes. Explore the following location card, Lebanon forest. All right, so I draw two cubes, gold and awareness. Now, since I'm still here in the village, let's uh, let's buy my oak bow back, a new oak bow. So I've lost, I think, two of these already. Buy another one and pay for that. And now I find the Lebanon forest and explore it. So, Lebanon Forest, Lebanon Forest, here it is, a quest for a blacksmith to find his friend who is a well-known chef. All right, Lebanon Forest. And I think I'm going to stop here until next time. So when we come back, we will look for the blacksmith's friend, French Shorty.